Hi, in this vlog I'm going to talk about culture shock when you first come to China. There are five steps or five phases to culture shock. Culture shock doesn't happen to everyone and there's no fixed time of, of how long you'll spend in each phase of it. You start off in the honeymoon phase where everything is new and exciting and uh, everything seems pretty great, Nothing, nothing's going wrong. And then you move into the hostility or the irri irritability phase and this is where things in the new culture can start to irritate you, start getting quite frustrating and you might also start to feel a little homesick in this phase. The next phase is gradual adjustment and this is when you start to overcome any of the culture shocks and you start uh, becoming used to the new culture. The fourth phase is adaptation and this is where you're pretty comfortable with the new culture, you're used to everything, nothing's like new or shocking to you anymore, you're quite happy and comfortable living in the new culture. And the final phase, uh, the fifth phase, is re-entry travel shock. And this is when you go back home and things, uh, things there seem quite different to you, seem quite strange, uh, they're not the same as when you left. When I first arrived in China I was definitely in that honeymoon phase where everything was new and exciting and I just wanted to visit lots of places, try lots of new things and I could easily picture myself living here for another year or two at least. And then uh, after a couple of months some things did start to bother me, I guess I entered that irritability phase where uh, mainly the problem was the skill making last minute schedule changes, I found that really frustrating. And there were other things like uh, waiting an hour in the bank to do something really simple or going to a restaurant and not realizing that I had to order using WeChat and then I'd be just sitting around for ages waiting for a waiter to come take my order. But eventually I learned how things worked here and I got used to the way of living here. Things uh, stopped bothering me or they stopped bothering me as much as they did before. So now I feel quite comfortable living here. I know to expect that long wait at the bank I know how to order the food I want now and I knew before coming to China that the skills can make sort of last minute schedule changes so I knew that was going to happen and it, it was still frustrating at the beginning but now I'm used to it, it doesn't really bother me anymore. It actually works out pretty good a lot of the times because they will just they'll cancel my lessons and I might end up with more free time, more days off. Um, you know, If they told me sooner, sure I could have made plans for the day but I'm not going to complain about getting a day off. And just doing most things now are a lot easier because I can speak a little Chinese. That's so, that definitely makes so your, your adjustment to the new culture a lot easier. Now there are things that will probably shock you or surprise you when you first come to China. The following isn't supposed to be like a list of just bashing China or making it seem like a bad place to live because it's definitely not. It's, it's a great place to live but it's, I think it's important to be aware of these things so that when you do come, that sort of culture shock is lowered. It's it's not as surprising to you. So the following isn't uh, isn't supposed to paint China in a bad light. It's just to make you aware of these things, so that when you do come here, you're you're more prepared, and then it's easier for you. So with that said, let's get into some of the things that you're going to see and experience here that are considered cultural shocks. So a big one is communication. It can be really difficult and frustrating at the beginning when you first come here and you can't speak any Chinese or you can't speak much Chinese. Uh, it's going to just make life so much harder for you. So I'd recommend you learn some basics before you come and then that way at least the first few days or weeks won't be so bad. And then while, when you're here you can start to learn a lot more and that will become easier over time. And then sort of that culture shock disappears because it's a lot easier to communicate with people. A pretty obvious shock in China can be how crowded places are. So you won't enjoy the same personal space as you do back home. For example, like on the metro or in the supermarket, you're going to have people leaning over you all the time, jostling you about, but uh, just get sort of used to jostling back, it's fine. And because it can be so crowded here, there's not always that same level of manners that you might expect. And it's not that people here are rude, because they're not. They're very friendly, they can be very polite, but no one's going to stand back and let you get on the metro before them. And rarely, rarely will people stand back and hold doors open for you. It's just when there's so many people, you, know, you can't stand around all day as the whole of China walks through the door. Queuing also isn't the same as in the UK, so people will often try to cut in front of you. And so I'd recommend don't leave any gaps when you're queuing. You can try calling the people out or you know you can just stand back and accept it and accept that you're gonna to have to wait a bit longer 
you get used to these things and you know it doesn't mean that you have to give up your manners or become rude in any way. Now another culture shock here is that people might stare at you quite a bit, um, especially in the cities with, with fewer foreigners, they kind of stare, they might point as well, especially kids, you know I've had kids point at me and shout why go Ren, why go Ren, which means foreigner, you know, point at the foreigner. And um, they might try and take pictures of you too, sometimes kind of slyly with their phone camera. Um, it is weird at first, but you get used to it. And, uh, you know, they're not meaning any harm by it. I don't really know why they do it, but uh, you get used to it. It's not, it's not so bad. You're going to see people spitting quite a fair bit here. They'll like, hack up the phlegm and spit it. And uh, it, it tends to be the slightly older people who do it. Uh, it's pretty gross, and uh, you'll... I was going to say you'll get used to it, but you don't really. It is gross, but just try not to sort of, you know, head swivel, stare at them. Just don't, don't stare when you, when you see that happening. Another thing that's a bit gross is people going to the toilet outside. And I don't really get this because there's, there's free public toilets everywhere in China. But uh, yeah, you will see this happen, not very often. It's usually little kids. They, a lot of the, the really young ones, like toddlers, they wear uh, crotchless trousers so that they can basically just do their business anywhere and this is one you definitely don't want to be staring at okay so you will notice this happening just try and ignore it and that brings me to toilets here a lot of the toilets here of what I call squatting drops so it's basically a hole in the ground with places either side to put your feet you can squat do your business okay they're not the nicest places they don't smell too great but you're gonna have to get used to using them because they're they're everywhere uh, and I'd recommend you bring your own tissues, hand sanitizer when you go because a lot of them don't have soap or paper towels for drying your hand. So they're not great, but and it is kind of a, a shock the first time you walk in. Um, but you're going to get used to that as well. And there, there are still plenty of places with Western toilets, so it's, it's not like you have to use them if you really don't want to. But just be aware that that's what the toilets are like here. Uh, some foods and some restaurants might be a bit of a shock at the beginning when you first arrive. Uh, they tend to eat the whole animal here. So I've ordered duck before and I'll be sitting eating the duck and the pancakes and then the waiter will bring out a plate of everything else, so like fried head, feet, every part of the bird. And uh, yeah, that's a, bit, that's a bit gross the first time it happens to you. And uh, you might you might think you can order in a restaurant, so the first time you recognize the character for chicken on the menu, and you order it, hoping for, you know, like a regular chicken breast, and you end up with chicken feet. It's quite disappointing when that happens. You're probably used to uh, filleted meat, so like with the bones and most of the fat removed. Here they tend to just sort of chop up the whole animal, so you can get like chunks of bone, chunks of fat in your meat, so just be aware of that when you come. Um, but with the food and stuff, I'd say just, just try everything at least once and if you don't like it, you don't have to order it again, but you might be surprised and find something that you've not tried before that you really do like and then uh, you, know, you can order that again in the future. You'll find lots of places uh, with food that you do enjoy that you can keep going back to. So there are, there are loads of restaurants here, so if there's some that are just kind of grossing you out, you don't have to go back. There's so much choice that it's fine. Uh, food shopping here is pretty much the same as back in the UK. The supermarkets are quite similar, uh, but a lot of them do have a, a, live, a live animal sort of section. So they'll have fish, frogs, crabs, that sort of thing. And occasionally they do jump out their tanks when, they're, when you're shopping. Uh, so that, that makes it a slightly different shopping experience. Everyone knows that China has a pollution problem. But even still, that the first day you step out on a really smoggy day is, is quite surprising. It's like a, a blanket of thick fog, and then if you're out in it for too long, your throat starts to get kind of scratchy. But having said that, there hasn't been a day like that in a while, so I don't know, maybe they're starting to clean up the problem, I really don't know. Um, and also this will depend which city you're in. So if it's a city with lots of heavy industry, it's gonna be a lot worse, but if it's a smaller city, it's uh, generally a lot better, and uh, yeah, I'd say it doesn't it doesn't happen that often anymore. It's most of the days are, are clear skies, so I think it, it might be getting better. I'm not sure. It sounds like I've just listed a bunch of negatives about China, but I really don't mean it to sound like that. These are just things that are different to back home in the UK. Um, they're things that you'll get used to and hopefully get used to pretty quickly. I just think it's it's easier if you're aware of them before coming 
then you, it's not such a big shock when you first experience them. You can sort of start that adapting process sooner and then you'll get over that initial cultural shock faster. And once you get over that cultural shock, you realize that it is a really great place to live. There's so much great, great food to eat. Uh, there's amazing public transport. Most things are quite a fair bit cheaper than back in the UK. Lots of people here are really friendly. There's lots of amazing places to visit. So it really is a, a great place to live. And now I, I would genuinely happily stay for another year or two. If you're thinking of coming to China, just make yourself aware of these differences in culture, you know, the different ways of doing things here, and then that'll make the, the transition, the adaption, a lot easier. It'll make it happen a lot faster. And that way you get to sort of phase four of culture shock, the adaptation phase, a lot sooner and you can really start to enjoy living here. Then you can have the fun of re-entry shock when you return to the UK or wherever you're from and you wonder why you can't pay for everything everywhere just using your phone because well, certainly in the UK it's still like 10 years behind China in terms of technology. Thanks for watching, bye!